It is always a blessing to be here, as we said in Sunday school. Uh, back in 1966, I was in the Navy, and uh, I was lost without the Lord uh, during the Vietnam War. I was on the USS Shenandoah, and a fellow that got recently saved, they taught him in his Baptist church how to lead folks to Christ. And over a period of an hour, he shared with me that I am a sinner on my way to hell. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I called upon Christ back July 1st, 1966, and trusted him as my Savior. And he, uh, we went actually through some discipleship, even in the uh, book of Romans. Uh, I learned some interior communication skill, and I was a troubleshooter for Ohio Bell for 16 years. Uh, in that period of time, later on, I married my wife to our Bible Institute at Cleveland Baptist Church, and I went on staff at Cleveland Baptist beginning in 1985 and uh, was on there for 17 years. But about around 2000, the Lord started stirring our hearts as I held many positions. I was an outreach director. And in that umbrella, uh, we had a nursing home ministry. Diana, Diana had a Friday day's Bible study. I had my office open five days a week for outreach visitation. We had 22 buses. Our church runs around 1,300 people at the time and uh, oversaw our Spanish ministry, our finance management program, discipleship ministry on Wednesday. So we had so many hats, but we wanted to go from church to church just to see what they're doing and learning from them and just compiling things to help encourage and refresh one another. So we call it the heart ministry, helping, encouraging, refresh one another. Diana got sick 20 years ago with heart issues. And at that time, God stopped putting my heart to start adding to our courses. We already had a finance management program. But over a period of 25 years, we ended up putting together 68 free courses, most of them a lesson courses, a whole New Testament, the larger chap the chapter by chapter, and the larger books, verse by verse, and the smaller books. Also, Old Testament character studies, and all at kjvhearthelps.com, Psalms and Proverbs, topical studies, how to get out of major debt, I ended up putting together Proverbs 31 course as well. And so, uh, as I said, they're all free of charge. Uh, they're used in, uh, we, we have Bible studies all over the place, and we they use them in church services, they use them in Sunday school. Uh, we have them used in the jail ministry from Michigan down to Florida, and Fort Bragg, the old Fort Bragg, and so forth. But I'd like you to uh, go over to um, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, and we're looking at the Lord in the Beatitudes here, and as we uh, comprehend all this here, we can see there's re no reason to worry. We mentioned many things in Sunday school, uh, grasping from the Psalms and Psalm 23, Psalm uh, 37, and uh, also Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. What we're going to do is we're going to do some responsive reading here and, and start in verse 25. I'll read 25 and you read 26. We'll go down uh, verse 34, Father, as we go into this, Lord, I pray that you would help us to see why we do not ever have to worry. Concerns, obviously, we have, uh, but just give us grace to stop our worrying and fretting. There are a lot of things that are out of our hands that we can just give over to you. Help If there's anyone here that has never trusted the Lord, or if they have trusted the Lord and never been baptized, to realize that would be a wonderful thing to do as well. Uh, I pray, Father, that you'd help me as we teach and preach now, but that your spirit will work through me. Cleanse me of sin. Forgive me, Lord. May I be a fit vessel for the master's use. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll read 25, and we'll just work right down to 34. Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can take, add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, O, oh, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is he is, and the morrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, ye little of faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What 
shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether with all shall we be clothed. For after these, these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth the need of all these things. But seek ye, this is a key verse, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. So we have from the Beatitudes this wonderful portion of scripture. You have, all of you I think have, the seven reasons not to worry. I will make mention of the one on contempt that we mentioned in Sunday school. I'll look at the middle one, 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. These other two you can look up on your own. And you can see why we need to be content and satisfied what the Lord is doing in our life. It's also good to memorize these as well. Because when we memorize scripture, we combat temptation. We make right decisions easier. And it guides us away from sin. So this will help us indeed to not to worry when we have a clean heart and a clean life. So 1 Timothy 6, 8, 6 through 8 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Or food and clothing, let us be content. So here's Paul in jail uh, in these times, often in Philippians and other places, that he's saying, let us be content. He knew how to be a base. He knew how to abound. And uh, we realized also that the Lord loads us with benefits. And so today we're going to talk about getting rid of unnecessary clutter in our mind and our heart. In Sunday school, I was talking about our mind, our also our mouth and how that affects us, and also our ministry and our meditation and memorization and uh, motivation in our life here. But let's look at uh, the one that says, the same God who created life in you can be trusted with the details of life. So Matthew 25, 625 says, Therefore I say unto you, Take not no thought for your life what you shall eat, eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more uh, body than raiment? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. But we need to bloom where we are as we look at the Lord and trust in him for the details of our life. Uh, we were in a situation where I was having heart problems uh, a little about a year ago. And uh, uh, when, I, when I go out and preach, I don't ask for anything or expect anything. But God is good to us, and we have about 10 entities that we use us preaching money for. And uh, basically, we have a lady that's a, a, a pastor's wife that's a widow, widow lady now, and we give her $150, and another pastor who's now retired, taking up his wife of dementia, $100, and so forth. We have about eight other entities as well. So we pray that God will bring money in to take care of these folks, and God has. Well, as I, I was on the fritz with my heart uh, for about three months, so Diana prayed that one month we re receive $2,000 more than, than, than normal. $2,000 more than normal. And so basically, we're just trusting in the Lord to do this for us. We have a church that was running like 15, and they said, you know, we, we like what you're doing and so forth. We're going to give you $1,000. They gave us $1,000 that day, this church running 15 people. And then through that month, another $1,043 came in. It was 2043 so we went to Chipotle's with the extra money. So, but that paid for the situation with our folks that we want to keep up with those, those issues there. Give the need over to the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and give him that need. Uh, uh, but my God supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Number two, worrying about the future hampers your efforts for today. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in their barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Well, I have about 200 birds that come to my bird feeder 
every day. So I help feed the sparrows and the, you know, the, we have cardinals and such like that. But God takes care of his own. He knows when we trust in him, we're his children. And that's the thing. Is the world itself, they haven't trust in Christ. They're creatures of God. We're children of God. God knows our need. He knows what we need at that particular time. And at meanwhile, we can serve others and not worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, 70%, they say, of things we worry about never come to pass anyhow. So why worry about it? You know? And people say, well, I need patience for this, but I'm not going to pray for patience because when you have patience, a lot of troubles come in your life. Well, they're going to come anyhow. You might as well pray for patience because it's going to happen anyway. You know, Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And that goes along with just, you know, when things happen in your life, Lord, give me the patience to wait on you while we go, we go through this trial together. And uh, I'll make mention about something in a moment about this. And so, <clears throat> number three, worrying is more harmful than helpful. Don't dwell on the things that are out of your hands. We mentioned that in Sunday school. I, I know this government is out of our hands, but it talks about Isaiah 1. Whether it be in our inner city, where we have the, we have the drug lords, or whether we have the swamp in Washington, it's all about money, it's all about power, it's all about control. But we don't have to get caught up in that. That's in God's hands, you know. Let God take care of them, you know. And so we pray for the president and the vice president. Maybe somehow, some way, they'll get saved. Everyone can get saved, even them, you know. So we pray for them. We, uh, and, all, and I'm not going, going down the political arena, but I'm telling you, when you're, you're, you're all for murdering the unborn, there's a real problem, you know. When you start going against Israel, there's a real problem. When, when your economy goes such, it goes bluey because they are pirates robbing of us of our monies to go for their projects. Meanwhile, we have all kinds of folks that are struggling with house payments, food, and all that. But we as people can give it over to the Lord, put it in the Lord's hand. We can help our neighbor. We can maybe bring food to our neighbor, bring assistance to them, give them the gospel. Diana, every time we go out, we have a mission. We have about 68 families in 29 areas, uh, zip codes, in which we try to minister with our various teams. And after she went to, I believe, a doctor's appointment, there were two folks that, uh, uh, families, one is 88 and 90. Uh, Mrs. Agnes is uh, taking care of her husband with dementia. So Diana brought over, they like vanilla milkshakes. So we just brought over vanilla milkshakes she did. And then basically another couple was 90 and 92 and she brought over a meal for them. And then another lady is dying of pancreatic cancer and she went to the florist and got a very nice flower they had on sale for $5, a nice little flower. She brought the pram. And so she was doing this on the way home. So, uh, you know, whatever the Lord puts in your mind is to minister to others. I want you to go on the back for a second before we finish this up. And look at this mark and the conclusion. Eliminate worry about self by ministering to others. This is the key, and I want to bring this up right now. Mark 10, 43 through 45. This is Jesus talking. They were arguing among themselves who's going to be greatest in heaven, specifically John and James, the brothers. But so shall it be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So in whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not to man. We have opportunities all the time around us to help folks where they're at. It might be in the family unit, it might be in your neighborhood. I have a, a, a battery snowblower and I, I enjoy that. I, I you know, was able to do my driveway, I live in a city lot, and do like four for other walkways and gives me an opportunity to witness to the neighbors and things like that. But to, to do good over evil, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It says in the Beatitudes here as well in Matthew 5.16. Then we look at number uh, uh, three. Uh, it says in Matthew 6.27, which, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to a statue, stature? And then when you look at number First uh, John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
We have the spirit of the living Christ in our hearts and lives. As we mentioned in Sunday school, 12 straight times from Galatians chapter 3 all the way through Philippians uh, chapter 2, 12 straight chapters in the Bible talks about the spirit of Christ and how he dwells in us, he can strengthen us, we can walk in the spirit, we can be filled with the spirit, we can pray in the spirit and so forth. But uh, just don't dwell on things you can't change. The devil likes us to dwell on our past. All of us have a past. In many ways, we're not proud of our past. Those sins are forgiven. The devil likes to bring them up. Amen? Don't dwell on those sins. They have been forgiven. Now, you might think of, well, I did this before. If that comes to mind, I say, well, just don't do it again. You know, uh, by God's grace, we can forsake that sin. Get around, around the right people, right places, and the right practices. I know that all of us have got around the wrong people. I can mention things when I was growing up in the caddy, as a caddy on the golf course. My mother, my mother told me when I was 12, stay away from the caddy shack. I said, okay, Mom. I'm 13 now. The next year, she, she asked me to stay away from the caddy shack. Now I'm 13. I know it all. You know. I don't have to stay away from the caddy shack. So I go to the caddy shack and they're playing poker. And uh, I didn't know how to play poker, but I was learning, you know. And basically, after a couple of weeks, one guy came out, and now I'm, with, I'm, I'm in the wrong place with the wrong people. And said, hey, sit down, Brian, you got, you got a hang of this. So I sat down, I won't go into a whole detail, but I needed one club to win the hand. I got the club, I made more money, half the, I made as, half as money on this one hand, and I did, uh, then caddying, I'm thinking, I've got it made in the shape. This, I, I got this figured out. Well, I didn't, you know. And uh, may I mention something about gambling? Uh, and uh, I, I went down the wrong road in that area, never got to be a big time gambler. But these folks that go to casinos, that are big bettors, I, I like to do research. There were 220 folks that went to this particular casino just doing some research on it. They give you all this extra money. You think they do it because they love you? Out of the 220 folks that gambled, losing, losing and winning $5,000 or more, how many people do you think won out of the 220? Seven. Seven people out of 220 people that gambled five, over 5,000 or more because they have, they, I mean, if you're, if you're a dealer, you better be doing good at what you're gonna do. You're gonna get fired. You gotta be 11% increase there, 11% take that they're gonna take out of that. But we have folks involved in all these things uh, pornography, all these things, we got to get our mind off of that stuff. We want to have a clean heart, a pure heart, a right heart before the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we have the wrong kind of heart, then we have reasons to worry. But he can create a clean heart in us by that precious blood of Christ. And we need to realize that the devil's out there throwing all these lures out there to get us in a position that we don't have that spiritual leverage anymore. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, basically, we look at all these areas here in which God can help us. We talked about Matthew 6, 28 through 30. It says in verse 4, God does not ignore those that depend on him. And why not take thought for Raymond? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon... In all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is, cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little faith? And sometimes God will use people in our life to meet a need. I, um, I, I like to uh, get clothes at uh, either a Salvation Army or places like that uh, and see what they have, especially after Christmas, they have good sales. I get coats like this for like five hours at the Salvation Army or whatever. And Diana, I needed some long sleeve, sleeve shirts. If you go to Kohl's, I, don't, I can't understand, but it's like 40 to $50 for a long sleeve shirt at Kohl's. And so I thought, Diana, I'm gonna go over there. She says, I'm going with you because you're gonna pick out some cotton shirts that are wrinkle and everything else. And you're, gonna, you're not gonna see all these little things that little stains that men don't see, you know? So we went there and uh, this was like four years ago. And we got 14 shirts for $43 total, and some brand new shirts. That'll last the rest of my life for sure. But anyways, the idea that God uses various individuals and also ways of clothing one another, hand-me-downs or whatever, food that we eat. Uh, I've mentioned I was in Cuba, I've been in the Philippines, been in China, been in Mexico, and just 
to see how little they have and how much we have. Uh, in the area uh, back back uh, eight years ago, I, I just decided I'm going to do some intermittent fasting and find something that I can find that I can stay, keep my weight in line. When Diana, I married her in 19, 1981, uh, I was chiding her about her cooking. You know, when I was in the Navy, I was in the Vietnam thing for four campaigns. Man, I was skinny as a rail, you know, and, and so forth. And so when I married Diana, I was 177, and uh, I, I thought, well, I'm just going to gold her about that. Well, I gained 25 pounds the first year, you know. So I got to 202, and I'm thinking, well, if I'm married 40 more years, that's going to be a thousand pound weight gain. I better not, so, so I, better, I better figure this out, you know. So uh, basically, I found this top 50 diet, uh, and it was number four. It was called the cruise control diet. I thought, I can do this. You know, it was intermittent fasting. The biggest thing is drinking a lot of water, flushing yourself out. Walking, you know, try to walk, it clears your mind, helps with stress and all that. Uh, and then basically, just uh, as much fruits and vegetables. But the intermittent was like, you stop eating at 7, then you don't, you don't have to eat till like 10, like 15 hours in between. And I kept, I've kept the weight off for 8 years, but also getting out, doing outreach or whatever it is. But just finding things that help me, that I can better serve the Lord, even my body, you know, to help us to be in a position to give glory, realizing that he takes care of us, the little details. He takes care of our clothes, he takes care of our food. He helps us with our, with our health issues as well. Number five, worrying shows a lack of faith and understanding of God. Matthew 6, 31 and 32, take, and take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink, whether we shall be clothed, for after these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. And so it says in Romans 14, 23b, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And uh, we have a young lady a few years ago that married our nephew. She's married uh, Pastor Lutz's daughter. And um, uh, basically, you just never know what avenue God will help. She needed some adjustments on her wedding gown. And one of our ladies, Martha Anderson, had a month to live, but she was a seamstress. She said, well, I have my hands, I still have my talent, I still have a little strength to do this for her. And uh, so she helped her with her wedding gown, made it beautiful for her. And here, God can use the most unusual people in your life to help encourage you. I was in a situation where we do, we do a lot of visiting, and we have a lady named... Uh, 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 Tammy Shoko, who passed away recently, not too long ago. She's from the Ukraine and just a wonderful lady. She was named the uh, she was named the mother of the year at Cleveland Baptist because she was a school teacher, never was married, but she had all these kids that she taught over these many, many, many years. And I was noticing, <clears throat> I was noticing in her garage these uh, these uh, shelves she had in her garage, and. Um, I thought, man, I could do that. Take these 23 inch, is that about right, 22, 23 inch between the beams there and make some shelves. Because I was out visiting in Medina and for whatever reason in the garbage, this person put four boards in there about eight foot long, four nice boards. And that's expensive stuff. It was in the garbage. So I took these four boards and I needed a backboard on my, uh, for playing basketball. And so we made a backboard, and it took about you know, maybe two and a half boards to make the backboard. Uh, but before that, we were working with Brother Nicky Tanko in Strongsville, and I used two boards for a ramp for my lawnmower. I was helping him cut the lawn for a year for his little church there to get him started. So I used the two boards for a ramp, and then after I was done with that ramp and helping him for a year, I saw, the, I saw those needs for the shelf. So I made shelves with those boards. So here, people threw this out in the garbage, you know, and these became very serviceable. I made a backboard, I made, I made ramps for my lawnmower, and made shelves. So you might think, I can't do anything for the Lord. God can use you mightily where you're at. He's brought you from a whole lot of, a lot of things. Then we look in uh, worrying, number six, keeps us from the real challenges God desires us to do. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is a priority. How is our prayer life? How is our prayer life in the morning? Uh, we had one lady that was having a real 
trouble in her office uh, situation, all kinds of fussing and fighting. So she got up 20 minutes early, Pastor, and prayed for her office and all the ladies and men in her office. And within a month, the whole thing turned around, the whole spirit turned around. And it's good to spend time. We have 504 20 minutes in a, in a month, or in a, in a week, actually, in a week. 504 20 minutes. We can do a lot in 20 minute time. We can visit a shut in. We can make a few calls on the phone encouraging people. Uh, you can, I know Diana used to make a lot of cookies for the neighborhood. Mr. First was a baritone next door, and he would say, Hey, Diana, what you doing? He knows what she's doing. She's making chocolate chip cookies. What he's saying is, I want the first batch of those chocolate chip cookies, you know. So over a period of time, we were able to lead him to Christ, Mr. and Mrs. Lowell to Christ, next door to us, because people do good things. Help them where they're at. Give them grace and help in those areas there. It says in um, Micah 6, 8, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. When we are merciful people and we have the joy of the Lord in our life and are serving other people, we don't have time to worry. The Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We need to be a merciful vessel for the Lord Jesus Christ. We often, uh, on Mondays, we ask God to give us divine appointments through the week. And uh, we do a lot of, we do, do everything we can do. We have a list of people we visit, shut ins, but do a lot of canvassing. This last week we did 650 homes or households in four different regions, talked to people that are very open. I had one guy, <clears throat> he's a black fella in the city of Cleveland, he was West 96th Street, uh, and he said, hey brother, how you doing? I didn't tell him I was a Christian, you know, he was a Christian uh, and so forth, and, and, but I went over and introduced myself to him, gave him a track and enjoyed, but there are people all over the place. I was I mentioned this before, there was, uh, probably many of you remember Amanda Berry. She was captured for 10 years by uh, and two other girls as well. Well, she used to go on our Cleveland Baptist Church bus route before she got abducted there. And I was working in her neighborhood one morning. I think it was a Monday morning, actually. We made a couple hundred contacts. But I talked to about 14 people with the Lord, many Spanish people, things like that, because everyone needs the Lord. And all of us can use our testimony, what God has done for us. Paul did that over and over again. Then finally, living one day at a time keeps us from uh, being consumed with worry. You know, the devil drives us, but the Lord leads. The Lord leads us. It says in, it says in Matthew 6, 34, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto, unto the day is the evil thereof. I just want to share one verse with you in Philippians there is this idea of not being anxious, no matter what the circumstances are. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But we have enough to do today to have a routine in which we can serve the Lord, whether when you work or whether you're at home, whatever you do, do it with all your might. But Philippians chapter 4 and verse number uh, four, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in, or anxious for nothing, but be in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful, dear Father, that we can have that peace of mind no matter what the circumstances. From the Philippian jail, uh, Paul, is call, Paul is talking to these Philippians, and I'm not sure it was from the Philippian jail, but from jail. And we do pray, God, that you just help us to have peace of mind and uh, cast our care upon you, Lord, all our worries, all our frets realizing that you care for it, for us. He said, come unto me, all, all that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And Father, I do pray for this congregation here this morning, that you just work in the hearts of these individuals and collectively as a church. But every head, head bowed and every eye closed, you say, Brother Starr, there is a time and place I have trusted Jesus as my Savior. I know that for sure. I'm not ashamed of that. Would you raise your hand if that's your request, as you know the Lord is your Savior this morning. Wonderful. There's a lot of people. But maybe you're honest and say, I never have trusted Christ as my Savior. You know, hell is a real place. We don't want anyone to go there. But Christ died for us that we don't have to go to hell and we can live for him. Does anyone want to say that you're concerned about your destiny, your eternal destiny? You've never, you, you've never trusted Christ. You, would, you, you want to trust him today. Is anyone like that today? If you want to embarrass you or point you out, if you just raise your hand, at least pray for you. Anyone like that this morning? They have never trusted the Lord Jesus, but I, I need to trust him today.